So what most people don't realize is that there are some different types of motivation and that they're not equal in terms of sustainability, quality, and efficiency. That being said, there's one kind that is almost a human superpower one type of motivation that's significantly better than the others. And you see, the problem is that there's a big chance that because of the way the system has taught you, you're mistaking true motivation for lesser versions of motivation. Because in the mind of most people, motivation is this movie thing, this magic sparkle that gives you unlimited energy to reach your goals. But if you ever try to engage in any habit, really, for more than a month, you've come to find that it's not as simple and it fades away really quickly. So the first thing that we need to tackle is your personal conception of motivation. What does that mean to you? Because what I see most people, including my fitness coaching clients describing is, is more an impulse than it is true motivation. And people will often mistake an impulse as motivation and they will produce an action based on that impulse. That's the first type of motivation that we're going to talk about today. And that is impulse motivation. It's when you quickly act without thinking about the consequences and the big picture. It's in the moment. You don't actually have any plan or structure besides the fact that you really want to do this right now. It's the type of motivation that people use to purchase things that they can't afford that makes people cheat on their partner or that makes you eat another slice of cake when you know you're full. Now, obviously there are levels to this and for most people, it's usually not that extreme. But my point is that regardless of the outcome of the behavior, it is still the same type of motivation that's fueling those behaviors. And this impulse motivation is based on desires and emotions. And don't get mistaken, it's a very strong source of motivation. But there are many problems with that impulse motivation. And the first one is that it's unsustainable by nature. You can't possibly sustain an impulse as you don't really have any control over your desires and impulses. They kind of come and go. And if you immerse yourself in those drives, you're more undergoing this than in control. Second thing is that this motivation doesn't care about your own good. It's a selfish kind of motivation that only wants to be satisfied by any means, regardless of the outcomes. And the third one is that it's very good at convincing your brain into thinking that engaging is the right thing to do, whatever the behavior. When you're in the moment, it looks awesome when it's really not. And if you decide to act on this strong drive, you'll release the urge. But as the purchase is done, for example, as this motivation wears off, you're confronted with the outcomes of your decision. And that's, for example, when regret, shame, fear, anger, negative emotions can start to appear as a result of the behavior that you've engaged into. What you have to understand with this kind of motivation is that most of the time it comes from biological or a necessary perceived need. That's why it's so strong and that's why it feels like, like it's like an itch that needs immediate attention and relief. But in modern environment, the long-term outcomes of acting out on that kind of impulse cost you way more than the immediate benefits. Speaking from experience, my quality of life tremendously improved when I learned how to make the difference between motivation and impulse. So it might sound obvious, but when you're the one projected in those scenarios, when you're in that situation, everything gets blurry and you're not sure anymore because it's very difficult to be objective when it comes to your own life. And for this shift to happen, so getting away from impulse motivation to true motivation, the important thing is awareness because awareness brings clarity. This is key. Ultimately, what you're looking for is to be well aware that this kind of impulse isn't real motivation. And a secret for that is to use its weak point. That's its duration. Because it's so strong, it cannot possibly last for a long period of time. And for me, what really worked kind of like magic is just asking myself, in 24 hours, will I still want to engage in that? Will I still want that? And if that urge was to buy this really cute iPhone case for $50 that someone in Taiwan is dropshipping to your door, maybe it's an impulse. You don't need a new one. By asking yourself that question, extending the period of time and projecting yourself onto the future, in those 24 hours, you will force your brain to take a step back from the immediate situation that you're in. And if you do that 90% of the time, you'll be like, no, I don't really need a new iPhone case. And the, the fact of just expanding your thinking onto a longer time frame 
will help you realize the flaws that are embedded in your reasoning right now, as this will help you greatly make the difference between real motivation and impulse-based motivation. Now let's talk about a whole different type of motivation. This time it's not self-induced like it was with impulse motivation. Your external environment projects it onto you. That's called extrinsic motivation. And it's the kind of motivation that's only driven by external reward. Basically, you're just engaging because you know that there's some sort of reward afterwards. And most of the time, people will fall for the trap of money and will start to produce behaviors just to get that outcome. But it can take different forms, such as praises, prices, encouragements, likes on social media. Modern society uses a lot of this extrinsic motivation as it's just easily perceivable. And you can see that all over social media. To me, the ultimate trap of extrinsic motivation that you don't want to fall for is the chase for status. Now, status is very important and it has been part of human existence ever since humans started to become social creatures that being said this chase is only directed by external feedback that you get from your environment meaning that if your environment were to stop giving you this kind of reward you'd stop producing the behavior fairly quickly more than that it depends on what people describe as valuable therefore you're not even here for your own desires. In other words, you're the one depending on your environment in order to produce actions. Common examples of that are going to the gym to get the summer body, get the new car to impress people, or get the likes on Instagram to, I don't know, get the girls. And if you choose this route for fitness, for example, if your fitness behavior depends solely on the likes that you get on your Instagram account, you won't get very far. Because if there's one day where, I don't know, you don't get that many likes, there's no motivation for you that day. So no, you're not producing the behavior. You're not going to the gym. I hope that laid out like this, it makes sense. And it really doesn't sound sustainable because it's, it's clearly not. And the ultimate danger with this extrinsic motivation is that you end up tying your self-worth onto those extrinsic rewards, which a lot of people do, by the way. You're probably never going to be able to feel free and really autonomous, as you'll just always depend on the cues your environment is sending your way to trigger the behaviors that you're somehow waiting for. And the main problem is that the school system, for instance, is based almost exclusively on that side of motivation, extrinsic motivation. If you behave well, it, you learn, then you get good grades, then you can win prizes, I don't know. And if you don't, you just get a bad grade. So yes, the system had to adapt like this because of the size of the population. There are just way too much students to make something adapted and to give personal feedback to each student. That's why everything is standardized. But with the school system reinforcing your intrinsic motivation ever since you were, I don't know, five, over the years, it reshapes your brain in a way that that's almost exclusively based on extrinsic motivation. That's in part the reason why most people nowadays can seem to stick with any habit that's not instantly rewarded by their environment. This is why people gravitate towards the fast and responsive but mediocre alternative. Now, I clearly shut out this type of motivation. It is not inherently bad. Using this as your primary source of motivation is. And it's very important as you just slowly start to realize that a lot of your daily actions are directed only by your outside and not even by yourself. These behaviors are important to question. Do you really want to be part of actions that aren't controlled but are dictated by, I don't know, social media? money or what other people think of you because i think that it's a dangerous road that leads to emptiness now obviously there's a savior a better alternative to these two types of motivation as you've probably guessed it it's hard to tap into more than that it's a prerequisite for a more meaningful life and the sooner you understand how it works the better. This third type of motivation is called intrinsic motivation. So basically, it is based on personal motivation, which means that the motivation only comes from the inside. It is the pleasure of engaging in the activity itself without any need for external reinforcements. And the biggest misconception about intrinsic motivation that people make is that they either think that they have it or they don't. Some people will even compare it to passion and 
tell you that they aren't very passionate people. And they have a hard time engaging in new activities. Everybody does. Intrinsic motivation is not something that's instantaneous. Intrinsic motivation is something that needs to be cultivated over the years. I've come to find that people have never really been shown how to develop this intrinsic drive. They probably don't even know that it exists. The biggest downside with this type of motivation is obviously the time that it takes to develop. That being said, when you access this motivation, you can tap into an almost infinite source of fuel, of energy that will stick with you for the whole ride. And out of those three kinds, um, this is the only one that's sustainable. Think about yourself as a car battery. You need this battery in order to start the engine and then you're going to be able to move freely so impulse based motivation will be like a booster it's strong but it's a one-time thing if you do it every day you'll just ruin the battery in a couple of weeks intrinsic motivation will be more like using the battery of someone else you're not using yours you're depending on an external one and every time that you want to use the energy to start the engine you have to wire yourself to a battery that's outside of your control, greatly restricting you in your motion. Finally, in that scenario, intrinsic motivation is finding the secret ignition and being able to start your own engine on command whenever you need to, because you know exactly how to trigger your inner battery. And in order to build intrinsic motivation, you first need to be genuine because it has to mean that you're engaging in an activity purely for the activity itself. You're not expecting any specific outcome as a result of engaging in this, in this activity. At first, finding out what genuine activation in a habit looks like is very hard because if you've been operating under extrinsic and impulse motivation for uh, the majority of your time on earth, this shift will be very hard as you and your brain will just have to accept that you're going to drive in the unknown for a long period of time. Because as you have to get away from the social and typical path to discover your inner motivation, you won't have any external feedback for a while. That's just part of the process. If you decide to engage in something out of the norm, like picking up going to the gym consistently, you'll be operating in the dark and just have to be okay with that. Be aware of the fact that this is where most people quit as their brain will just keep telling them we're not receiving any positive feedback. Therefore, what we're doing is bad. We need to stop it. And yet it's exactly the opposite of that. You truly need to go through this process and to tell your brain that it's going to be okay as this will be the most meaningful process you start in your whole life. Now, here are the three starting conditions in order to start developing your inner drive. The first thing that is going to help you find and activate your inner motivation is going to be interest, not passion, interest. Those activities that have been stored in the back of your mind for the past, I don't know, two, five, or even 10 years. Things like I think I'd really want to learn how to play an instrument. I'd probably really enjoy to breathe more often or even I want to launch my own business. You cannot be sure that you'll like it because you've never experienced it, but you've been thinking about this long enough so that you know it's not a craving. It's not an impulse. And then that's when most people will add up the famous, but, and here's when you insert all the different excuses that your brain will come up with to discourage you from engaging. I don't have the time, my schedule is full. I don't have the motivation. I don't have the energy after my work day. Now, this video isn't about excuses, but if you'd like a video to be about this topic, let me know. These are interests. These are tiny sparks that can lead you to discover inner motivation. This is not inner motivation. Everyone has those. Now, this is a very good beginning. And the next condition for the discovery of intrinsic motivation is discipline. For this specific reason highlighted prior, the lack of external feedback, you need to force this. You need to make this happen. For that, motivation is not your friend. Motivation can do that for you. However, this is why discipline has been designed for. So over the next few months, pick one interest and write yourself a very simple goal. You can use this goal prototype. Over the next months, I will engage in activity for duration on these specific days at this precise time. And finally, the last component will be acceptance. You're going to accept the fact that you're bad at it. The fact that you're bored when starting, the fact that you'll find everything more interesting than what you're supposed to be engaging in. Be okay with the fact that your brain is probably going to trick you into thinking that 
this what a stupid idea and you're not made for this and whatever. Welcome that weird, overwhelming and confusing feedback because this is exactly how it's supposed to feel when your brain has no point of reference. And if you're feeling this, keep going, you're probably on the right path. Because when you feel like there's only you and the activity, no one to tell you that you're good at it, no one to tell you that you suck because no one is engaging in this behavior around you, you're almost sure that you're going on the right path for building your inner motivation. And this is exactly the relationship that you need to nurture. And then if you keep engaging, you'll slowly perceive the magic as the shift will happen as a result of your efforts. If you do, congratulations. This means that you're starting to tap into intrinsic motivation. I hope this helps. Trust the process.